The Vive brand has had an interesting few years. Despite huge consumer interest in the early days of VR, the brand has shifted more towards the B2B market with products like the Vive Pro and the Vive Focus 3. The Vive Flow, a VR headset that isn't really a VR headset, is set to change that. HTC refers to its latest headsets as a pair of immersive glasses with a sunglasses-like design and an impressive lightweight build. Intrigued? Confused? Is it all of these? Okay, bear with us as we explain this in today's video. Yes, in today's video, we are showing you whether HTC Vive Flow offers the best virtual reality experience. Watch the video till the end and subscribe for more. Setup and compatibility. The Vive Flow's compatibility will undoubtedly be its stumbling block. HTC claims that the Vive Flow does not require a high-end smartphone to power the headset, providing a 409 pound or $425 Samsung Galaxy A52s along with the headset for review. And that claim is mostly true. We did use the A52s for most VR experiences and it performed admirably. The issue is that the Vive Flow isn't compatible with all Android smartphones, and there's no hard and fast rule about which ones are and aren't. HTC's website has a list of confined models, but it's a small fraction compared to the larger phone industry. It's not even guaranteed on high-end smartphones, as we discovered when we tried the Vive Flow with the Oppo Find X5 Pro and Asus ROG Phone 5 that they only support some of the headset's features and functionality. The recommendation provided by the Vive Flow when it tells you during this step to use a different smartphone, because most users will not have multiple phones lying around to use, you must confirm whether your phone is compatible before purchasing. Oh, and if you have an iPhone, you're out of luck, at least for the time being. HTC has hinted that iPhone support is on the way, but no timetable has been provided. Once you've confirmed that you have a compatible smartphone, the setup is simple. Go to Google Play, download the Vive app, and follow the on-screen instructions. It will guide you through the initial login process, assist you in adjusting focus, test whether your phone is fully compatible with the phone mirroring mode, and demonstrate how to use the controls. The entire process should take no more than 5 minutes, after which you will be free to explore the virtual world of the Vive Flow. Design and Build the Vive Flow is not your average VR headset, as evidenced by its design. It looks more like a pair of smart glasses than a full VR headset, with large, brightly colored reflective lenses that are almost fashionable, if not a little superhero-esque. It's not just for looks, there are numerous advantages to a more streamlined design. The most obvious advantage is that it's much lighter than alternatives, weighing only 189 grams, the weight of an average smartphone, but there's more to it than that. For example, the design prevents the headset from wrapping around the top or back of the head, making it more comfortable to wear. This is supplemented by a soft touch face gasket that snaps into place with magnets, or if you prefer a more open experience, a nose insert is included in the box. This adds up to a headset much less front heavy than competitors, which expands potential use, in theory at least. The rigid arms that hold the headset in place are a drawback, at least for me. They have the appearance of sunglasses arms, but they are longer, thicker, and tighter at the back, with a noticeable buildup of pressure on the back of the head after about 30 minutes of use. A USB-C cable running from the right arm emphasizes the uncomfortable arms. What is the purpose of a cable, you may wonder? It is required to operate the headset. Yes, the headset lacks a built-in battery, or one that will last more than a few seconds without power. How else could HTC create a headset weighing only 189 grams? The good news is that it only requires a 7.5 watt power source, so you can use your smartphone, a battery pack, or virtually any USB-C port, though it is less convenient than a built-in battery. The display inside is impressive, with a 3.2K resolution roughly split at 1.6K per eye, a 100 degree fill of view or FOV, and a 75Hz refresh rate. It costs slightly less than Meta's standalone headset, but the difference in overall quality is negligible due to the narrower field of view. It's vivid, bright, and detailed enough for the VR experiences on offer. The Flow outperforms the Quest and nearly every other headset in the lens department, with an easy-to-use focus system ideal for glass wearers. Instead of forcing glass wearers to wear the Vive Focus over their existing classics, the Flow has a wide manual focus range from 0 to plus 6 that eliminates the need for glasses entirely. It's a huge deal for someone who wears glasses daily and something we'd love to see on other VR headsets in the future. Meditating with VR Aid when you think of calming, relaxing situations, a 189 gram pair of glasses sitting on your face is unlikely to come in mind. It took some getting used to, but once we did, it was quite easy to ignore. 
In fact, this is one of the lightest VR headsets available today. It allowed us to immerse ourselves for extended periods, which was ideal for our goal with this headset, meditation. We first tried an experience called Cosmic Flow in which calming spirals and shapes flew past accompanied by music while wearing the headset and sitting in a quiet room. We obtained two apps that provided meditation experiences. The first app transported me to a beach at sunset, with a soothing voice guiding me through meditation while waves noises played in the background. This was actually quite tranquil. It'd be better on a real bench, but it's surprisingly accurate. On this app, we tried another experience that dropped me on a windy mountain. This could have been relaxing if the mountain in the distance hadn't keep glitching and spinning. We tried a few other meditation apps, and they all worked in the same way. They put you in a relaxing setting and got you through a calming experience. Some were better than others, but none of it really wowed us. Compared to many other VR experiences, the HTC Vive Flow provides a lower resolution experience. Of course, this is a trade-off for portability, but it does mean that the beach, mountain, or other calming location you find yourself in is slightly blurry or has some strange glitches in the distance that are difficult to ignore. Conclusion However, there were a few occasions where we became distracted by an experience and engrossed in it. When the headset distracted you with a detailed yet soothing experience, it was at its best. We are not convinced that the HTC Vive Flow can fill the need for a futuristic wellness device. Instead, the Vive Flow could have potential as a portable games console and a way to explore stories in made up lands and learn about the world. This is all with the HTC Vive Flow review. What do you think about the HTC Vive Flow? Let us know your views about the virtual reality experience with HTC Vive Flow in the comments below and subscribe to MetaHub for more.